Hi everyone, today I'm going to be building a Raspberry Pi security camera setup. This will allow you to monitor multiple cameras from the same interface. Firstly, let's head over to PyMyLifeUp.com or grab the link to the full tutorial in the description below. Find the Raspberry Pi security camera tutorial and now we need to download three things. The first is the Motion Pi image, so head over to their GitHub and download the relevant image for your version of the Pi. In my case I'm running a Raspberry Pi 2, so I'll get the Raspberry Pi 2 image. Next let's download the formatting tool, so click on the SD Association's website link. Then click on the OS that is relevant to you. Click on accept and it should now start to download. Next let's download the Win32 Disk Imager by clicking on the link. This will take you to the download page, simply click on download and it should now start to download. Now that they're all downloaded, we will need to extract the Motion Pi image. You will need a tool like WinZip or 7-Zip to extract it. Once extracted, now let's extract the SD formatter. Once extracted, install the program. Let's now also install the Win32 Disk Imager. Now let's format the SD card by using the SD formatter. Make sure the drive letter is the correct SD card. Then click Format. Now let's write the Motion Pi image to the SD card, so open up the Win32 Disk Imager. Browse to the image we extracted earlier. Again, make sure the drive is correct and then click Write. It will take a few minutes to install. Once done, safely remove the SD card from the computer and insert into your Pi. Ok, before we do anything we'll want to put the Pi camera in if you're using one. You can just use a normal USB camera if you want. Pull the two tabs up gently on the camera slot, this will allow you to put the ribbon cable in. Place the ribbon cable in so the metal strips are facing away from the Ethernet port. Make sure it is all lined up and now push the tab back down so the ribbon cable is secure. Now connect up the rest of the cords and then turn the Pi on. Now in a browser we will need to head over to our Pi. If you know the IP address for the Pi, simply enter that. If you don't, either look for your Pi on your network and use the address name. This can be found in the network folder in Windows or you can find out using your router. In my case that's 192.1. 168.108. In here you will be presented with a stream from your camera. So now let's log in as the admin. So go up to the key circle and click on it. Now just enter admin as the username and you should gain access. Now if you go up to the upper left corner and click on the three lines, this will bring up the settings. You can set up your admin password and surveillance account password here. I recommend you do this to prevent unauthorized access. Now let's turn on advanced settings so we can see all our available options. In here you have plenty of options, if we want to connect to a wireless network we can do this here. Simply turn on wireless network and then enter the relevant details, making sure you have a Wi-Fi dongle attached. Here we also have a lot more settings such as FTP server for storing and accessing files, Samba server so you can see the drive on your local network, and also SSH if you need to access the command line. These can all be switched on and off. If you want to add a new camera, head up to where it says camera 1 and then go to add camera. Let's add our webcam by selecting it from the drop down box, in my case it is already selected and there you can already see it being displayed. So now let's also add the network camera I have set up using the webcam server tutorial. So select the network camera from the drop down box, in my case again it is already selected. Add the URL including the port to our stream, in my case it is 192.168.1.1. 1098081. Then click OK. Now we have both our cameras added, we can keep adding more cameras if required. You can add third party cameras, they don't have to be Raspberry Pi controlled. Now let's take a look at some of the settings you can change for the cameras. In here you can change the name of the camera, so for example let's change camera 1 to living room plant 1. There are plenty more settings you can change here, each has their own tooltip you can view by hovering over the question mark. 
For now, I will keep mine as they are. You need to keep in mind that increasing stuff like the frame rate, video resolution, all will have an impact on the performance of the software. Whenever you make a change, you will need to click on Update, located at the top of the screen. File Storage is where your images will be stored. If you keep this as the default, you can access these over the network or by using FTP. You can also change this so that it stores on a network attached storage instead. The text overlay allows you to change the text you see on the cameras. You can customise this to whatever you want. Video streaming allows you to alter how the stream appears and if you want to enable passwords on each of the streams. Remember, each camera will have its own port, so if you don't want these accessed via that port, remember to turn on authentication. Motion detection allows you to alter when the camera considers there is movement. You can change this if you're finding you're getting a lot of false positives. Motion Movies allows you to set how the Motion Pie software will record whenever there is motion detected. You can also enable notifications so whenever motion is detected you can get it to alert a web page, your email or even run a Pie command. Working Schedule allows you to set days and times on when the streams and motion detection will be active. Let's now log out and log in as the user. As you can see, the user can only view the streams and can't actually change any of the settings. Now, if you want to access the pictures and recordings that the Motion Pi software has saved, you can find the Pi on your local network. If you open it up, you can see the SD card and storage, but first it will prompt you for a username and password. Enter the username and password. If you didn't set a password before, you will need to do that before you can access this. Storage is where the external drives, such as USB drives, will be shown and SD card is for these default, so that's where our images and recordings will appear. I will now trigger some motion. If we go back to Motion Pi, you can see capture images by clicking on the camera button above the stream. And yep, you can see it has had motion. We can also view this in the file explorer by going to SD card and then today's date, and yep, it's all there. I hope this tutorial has helped you in setting up your own security camera network. Feel free to drop us a comment below or at pymylifeup.com. If you need more information, then check out the extensive guide at the website. Looking for something new to do? Check out these awesome 21 Raspberry Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.